All right, George, we're live. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are back on another Friday. I think it's, it, yeah, it's, um, um, <laughs> welcome back to the Ask France Forever Women's Show. Um, I'm back from Spain, as you can see, because I'm a lot better looking than Dan. So, um, I <laughs> uh, just want to welcome my guest, uh, Andrew. How you doing? Greetings, all. Happy Friday. How are you? fabulously well because it's friday <laughs> cool. um uh my um scottish sister part of the kimmy little like email how you doing yeah i'm about you yeah all good um also we've got first show for daisy how are you i'm good thank you how are you yeah i'm, I'm good thank you um I was um, making sure everything was working and technology is not my best friend and all that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so also we've got Chantel back again. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Glad that the week is over and looking forward to football on Sunday. Cool. And we've got Naomi. How are you doing? I think it's your first show as well, I think. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. And then we've got a special guest, the main man, Tim Stillman. How are you doing? Hey George, I'm okay, thank you. That's actually a bit of a lie. I got back from Munich last night and I don't know what day of the week it is, so I'll take all of your words for it that it is indeed Friday. <laughs> um, the less said about Munich, the better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to do a podcast on this same channel about the Villa and Munich game last night, so I'm still mm -hmm. SD from that, I think. Um, but yeah, um, so welcome to everyone watching as well. Um, we'll kick off straight away. So we're going to talk about, we'll start with the Bristol City game. Uh, I'm going to come to you first, Daisy, put you on the spot. Um, so yeah, um, was the lineup what you thought it was going to be in, against Bristol City? Yeah, I would say so. I um, thought we might see something of Kyra, but obviously the injury... Um, which we're not sure about, <laughs> is an injury, I think. Um, I thought Ford did extremely well, even though I was one of the people who said Lacasse should start. So I'll eat my words there completely. She's come back in form, which we love to see. Um, I thought lots of top performances from individuals, but it really was a team performance. Really glad to see uh, Sabrina in goal. I thought she did fantastic. Um, and I was a bit shocked about seeing McCabe on the bench, but I I think Catley also had a great game, so a really, really good game. Um, yeah, quite happy with the lineup, and I think we'll probably see the same again, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, Tim, I'll come to you. Um, I know a lot of people have been calling for Dinner and Russo to play up front. What's your views on that? Yeah, I, I kind of expected to see Russo and Steena. I think partially because Steen has been really, really good this season. I mean, also they are trying to convince her to sign a new contract at the moment. So I kind of wouldn't be surprised to see her start every game until the end. Um, but I, I don't think it's just about the contract. I think also when you're playing a team like Bristol City, you kind of, you know what they're going to do and you know they're going to sit back and you probably want as much firepower as possible. I think that's probably going to be the same against Leicester. It's probably going to be the same against Everton. And with kind of Viv Miedema injured, Frieda uh, wasn't available for the game, that kind of opens up the number 10 spot. So I think it actually makes it quite an easy decision um, to play those two players together. So, yeah, I, I was fully expecting to see that and I'm fully expecting to see it to be honest, probably until the end of the season, um, or at least until the Man City game. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, I think it's not just about the contract for me with Steen. No, I just it's plenty. Like the games you've got coming up, there are options, aren't they? Like to try out that um, system. Um, I'll come to you, um, Mel, because there's a lot of stats flying around about our Scottish superstar. Um, she's that. Like, um, she's like a, just a timeless like, legend, isn't she? Really, she is. I would argue that she is like a fine wine, where she just gets better and better with age. But I am also slightly biased. Um, also, the stats coming out from her from Sunday were a different level. What was it? Ninety-nine percent pass completion. 
if you do the math, I think it works out as like 90, 99.82 or something. She only had one pass that was incomplete. And just, I feel like Kim gets a lot of flack on online that people don't really think that she brings that much to the team sometimes. But I feel like under the radar, like below the radar, if you're really doing something, if it's just pulling back and defending, if she's, yeah, she's always there. She's always doing something that I think makes a difference in the game. And I feel that considering we've now lost Wally till the end of the season, um, Kim's got a really hard role to do. Um, and in true Kim Little style, she'll, she'll take it in her stride and she'll, she'll smash it. But yeah, I feel like she, she played really well on Sunday. I'd also argue that it was probably Beth Mead's best performance and she came back from an injury. Um, yeah. Caitlin Ford as well looked a lot brighter and um, coming coming out the pitch just instantly made a difference i i actually thoroughly enjoyed watching us play that game of football for once <laughs> the last few weeks hasn't been something that i've been able to see but yeah it's probably one of the first games in a while where i've actually sat down and enjoyed it from minute one to the 90th minute yeah um it was it was quite an interesting one for me because i just watched the men um, yeah bar at Meadow Park so um, I was with Lewis and he went you don't look happy I went don't talk to me <laughs> like, so uh, having a good game like for the women that was kind of ideal because I thought oh no don't do this to me like, I can't be having a double defeat or some or double drop point um, I'll come to you um, Naomi was you at the game yeah I was okay. It wasn't you that bit the tail, was it? The <laughs> um, so yeah, um, what was your thoughts on the game and yeah, uh, about Beth Mead as well, I agree, I do think that was her best game. Yeah, um, I agree, I thought Beth Mead's performance was really good as well. Um, I thought like, um, as you said, it was a very enjoyable game, like the team as a whole played well um, and it you could tell like that like they've been learning from each game. Um, I thought it was also like really, really nice to see um, Laura and um, Katie come on and just the support that the team had for the girls that got subbed on, specifically Katie as well, was just so nice to see. Um, I'll come straight to you, Chantel. Um, the, I thought the um, noise and the chanting for what uh, Laura got was probably the loudest I've heard. Yeah, I think it was very sweet to have a comeback at Bournemouth where obviously the fans do make the atmosphere so much more louder there and I think it's just nice to have her back and I was there and I swear I think I went deaf for a couple of days fans were doing so good at cheering but like we supported them they gave us a good game and I'm utterly proud of like what was shown on that game because I think hands down it's been a nice team game that they've secured a lot of goals which we haven't had so far throughout the season yeah no I agree um andrew do you have any comments before i ask um yeah just to so i think just to sort of mention about kim uh you know she even she's even able to have a rest halfway through the game and still outplay uh, uh the uh, uh the the bristol players so you know that that's taking it to the level that's taking it to the next level isn't it does she knows exactly what we need. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Tim, I just want to ask you about Bristol City. Um, I, I know we obviously won that game quite comfortably, but is the levels like from the top part of the uh, league to the bottom part, is it that massive or is it just Bristol City having a bad season? Uh, I think it is a little bit, but... I'd cut Bristol City a lot of slack because there's only two clubs in the WSL not funded by Premier League teams. And one of them's Leicester, who won the Premier League less than eight years ago and were in the Champions League. So I kind of think that doesn't count almost. So, you know, I've got a lot of time for Bristol City and I've got a lot of time for any team who, you know, relative to their overall budget, put in what Bristol City do and have done over a number of years as well. Bristol, when, when they were Bristol Academy, they finished second. They played in the Champions League twice, like under a decade ago. There's a financial reality to the WSL now that means a club like that is just always, always going to struggle, I think. And 
And I think on this occasion, you could see when we played them earlier in the season that they probably had more of a chance. They were probably a bit more in it and we weren't as good then. We were in quite a poor period, I think. But I think now you could see in this game, they've got City and Chelsea left to play as well. They're seven points adrift. I think you can see that the player, like their players haven't checked out, but you can see they know what's going to happen now. So, uh, you know, the Arsenal performance does has to, have to be taken into that context. But like I said, we played the same team five months ago and didn't look anywhere near that good. So, yeah, unfortunately, a club like Bristol City coming up, I'm not going to say it's a waste of a WSL place. It isn't. Um, but at the same time, like, it always feels like those clubs are going to be a little bit doomed. And it's going to be really interesting to see of all the many teams that could come up from the championship, quite a lot of them are, again, not actually backed by Premier League clubs. So it's going to be really interesting to see who comes up next season and how they cope as well. Yeah, I agree. I didn't actually think of that where they're not backed by a Premier League team, but yeah, it's a good point. Um, Andrew, do you have any comments on the chat or anything? Uh, just uh, <laughs> Dan's enjoying the WWE at the moment, but no other... Uh, uh, no other comments at the moment. Don't get you down at the O2, Dan. We need you back. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, we'll carry on the Bristol City. I want to talk to you guys about the atmosphere at Meadow Park because I, I know there's been a lot of chat with Arsenal, talk, uh, with people saying about moving to the Emirates like permanently. Um, I personally don't think that will happen like right now or... I've, I still think it'll be a couple of seasons. Um, Daisy, I'll come to you. With the, have you know? Um, obviously, I think everyone's noticed the, the change in atmosphere. But from an atmospheric point of view, do you prefer it at Meadow Park or the Emirates? Well, for me, Meadow Park, absolutely. I do. I do understand people's concerns when they say about the tickets and potentially we could definitely sell out a lot more. But I don't think. I don't think the Emirates is quite the level that we need to be at right now. So for me personally, I prefer Meadow Park um, and away games, the like atmosphere there. I think at the Emirates, I'm sort of sitting next on the block next to the atmosphere section where everybody else sits. So for me, it's I'm carrying block three um, on my <laughs> own as much as I possibly can. I don't know if anyone else sits in a different block, but it's just usually me and one or two other people. Um, and it's just... It's not quite there yet. A lot of people come into the Emirates for for a day out, um, and I understand that. But I'm gonna have to go with with Meadow Park. I think I just think apart from that one amazing section of the Emirates, um, which I am envious of anybody who sits there. Um, that's that's where I see it right now. Yes, yeah, fair point actually. Um, Andrew, I'll come to you. Obviously, it's a normally normally a party atmosphere in the North Bank, isn't it? Um, right. We all know Lewis brought his inflatable tyre. Um, yeah, and the amount of times he hit me in the head with that one, see where I couldn't see it coming either. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, yeah, so, what do you... I, I kind of agree with Daisy, wouldn't you? Like, I think with um, Meadow Park, you have the North Bank, which I would say predominantly is louder, but you do hear the East Stand singing as well, don't you? Yeah, and I think I think yeah, just the kind of the the acoustics and and the size of it, you're getting you're getting it's full of supporters rather than spectators. Where the Emirates is, I think the Emirates is improving, and I think that I suppose in a way we've kind of as a fan base, we've got to kind of get used to the fact that we will move into the Emirates, uh, you know, full time at some point. And it's a, perhaps maybe the thoughts should be like you know making block three, uh, you know, uh, you know widening that kind of singing section, have one, two, and three together. Um, you know, there's, um, it, 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 I think that's the kind of the way forward now, because that is, you know, that, that's the way it's going to go. They, we, you know, I suppose that, that I'm sure the, the club have kind of got, 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 a, got a plan B, maybe that, you know, there's just been this big growth at the moment. And I suppose it's hard to kind of measure, um, it, you know, because we don't have enough, um, we don't have enough data yet. But at the moment, it feels like that it, we're going, it's inevitable that all our games are at, at the Emirates at some point. Um, when that is, I don't know. I, I agree. I don't think that ne next year, you know, I suppose it's Conti Cup games um, that you, you, you cut, you know, if we get, uh, uh, you know, um, it depends on the quarterfinals, will we get in a Conti Cup? But that could be a, 
that could be a game that wouldn't necessarily sell out the Emirates, you know, on a on a wet on a wet Wednesday. Um, so um, yeah, I think it's looking forward and starting making that singing section uh, led by Daisy, maybe block three, uh, the Daisy section, and uh, becoming the sort of uh, add, adding that to the to the roster really. Yeah, um, I'll I'll come to you, Mel. What do you think about like Meadow Park versus the Emirates? I feel like I agree with people saying that it's getting to a point where I feel like we're we're outgrowing Meadow Park, but I don't feel like we're anywhere near the level yet where we could realistically play every game at the Emirates. Like the big games, like when we play Chelsea, when we play Man United, like you're inevitably going to get a big crowd for those, as we've seen. But like um like Andrew was saying, when it comes to midweek, like middle of winter, horrendous weather games against smaller clubs, are people really gonna really gonna go to the Emirates for it? No. Is it then cost effective for the club? No. Um but a lot of people don't see it that way. A lot of people just see it as they can't get a ticket to Meadow Park. So they think that the next logical step is we need to be in the Emirates. Ideally, we'd have somewhere in between, sort of like what Man City women have got. Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, I don't see that happening. So I feel it's it's toughening it out at Meadow Park for as long as possible. And then hopefully sort of picking up more and more of the bigger home games at, at the Emirates. Because I don't think, I don't know if Tim knows the answer to this, but I don't think we played Man City at the Emirates, have we? No. No. So there's a big game that always seems to get played at Meadow Park, which I feel like you're you're missing out on at the Emirates. But yeah, the atmosphere section needs to needs to expand. Daisy needs friends in Block Three. <laughs> <laughs> there's only there's only so much a girl can do on her own. Yeah, everybody, um, please buy tickets in Block Three so that you can join me. Um, but yeah, like the North, especially the North Bank at Meadow Park, when you've got. You got the head cases like us up the back, banging on, banging on the back, and Lewis with his multiple inflatables, and I'm pretty sure he's got plans for more. It's the atmosphere is definitely getting there at the Emirates, but I feel like you can't you can't replicate the noise and the chaos of the North Bank in just the one block of the Emirates at the minute. No, I get that. Um, yeah, the amount of injuries I've done at Meadow Park North Bank this it's normally against Man City as well. So like. Um, when Kate McCabe scored the winner, um, Lewis nearly threw me down the aisle. And the start <laughs> in the season, um, someone jumped and fell on my foot. So, yeah, it's, it's all fun. Um, I'll come to you, Tim, about because um, obviously I know you go to the men's games as well. Mm. If we moved, say, like to the Emirates, do you think it could? Could there be a chance that we fall into the trap, like what happens with the crowds, like say with a Carabao Cup or a Cup game? No. So, um, I mean, people will have seen, and it's true that, like, so Arsenal's current deal with Meadow Park goes up to 2027. Obviously, they're starting to talk about the renegotiation of that and everything. Arsenal will probably always have a relationship with Boreham Wood of some um, description. So, obviously, the men's academy teams play there but the women even if and when well I don't think it's if it's when Arsenal women move into the Emirates full time I don't know when that's going to happen um, they will always need a backup stadium and you know hopefully we won't be in the Conti Cup group stages too many more times but if that happens they won't want to play those at the Emirates they will always want they will always need Meadow Park as a backup so for example Leicester uh, Leicester women play most of their games at the King Power, but they have like a backup agreement with Burton Albion if like they can't use the stadium on certain days and Leicester in the Conti Cup group stages play at Burton Albion because there's less demand. So when people see that Arsenal are renegotiating with Meadow Park, it's not because they're binning the idea of playing at the Emirates full time. In, in terms of like the atmosphere, I think that can only improve with time. With more games, yeah, Man City next season. I'm sure Man City will be at the Emirates. I don't think Arsenal are going to go. They're going to play fewer games. Like when you consider Leicester, probably one of our least important glamorous home games of the season, just because of the situation we're in this season, and they've done almost no promotion and it sold forty thousand. Like that's a good indication of what like the resting demand looks like. 
in terms of the atmosphere though one of one of my well definitely my favorite memory of this season um one of my favorite memories of the last like four or five seasons was just seeing you guys sing the angel at the end of the conti cup final and to be fair molyneux is perfect for that because it's got the, like the rail seating big old kind of cop stand where everyone's together and and that was i filmed it on my phone and i went back and the next day i must have watched that video 50 times because I, I just loved that and i thought that there it is there's like there's 10 you know i don't know eight ten thousand people together they're all singing at the end i know that's a trophy and it's not the same as you know the middle of a league game but like there's something there if you can get enough people in one space and you are much but you you know there is the opportunity to do that at the Emirates. So I think it's got better and better at the Emirates as well. It it just needs that time. And I think even this season, like, you know, uh, the supporters clubs, like pushing with the club to have seats in certain places, like it, it's all evolving really, really quickly. I really think it is. And like the, the speed of the progress in both, not just the ticket sales, but the atmosphere. I don't know about you guys, but when I watch other games, that don't mm. involve Arsenal. And even when they've got quite big crowds, I watched the first like 70 minutes of Spurs Leicester and I'm not being patronising. I think it's great that they got 18,000 for that game, for the women's game. But when you watch it, it's like, but there's no atmosphere. Like yeah. none of the players have songs and stuff. And, and like, because that's where everyone else is. But Arsenal have got this whole fan culture songbook thing that, the other clubs are just catching up with but it's all happened in like 18 months two years basically so i you know it's we've got this far we you've got this far <laughs> this quickly like i honestly I, I don't i don't see that as a problem at all i i see that as like an exciting challenge not an obstacle yeah i agree i uh, well i think it's very important with that um aspect is when we do the pre-match meetups, um, obviously I like the pub, as people know. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think it like um, we have with the like the meet the meetups with the support club and the red and white and uh, the home and away. It's we're all, always growing and it's reaching like the amount of new people that I've met just like this season. I remember going to the Tollington. Um, what game? I think it might have been Chelsea. And outside was around, inside was around. Like, we've turned into a two pub football team. Like, in, I remember going to a, like an Arsenal women's game. I think it was the Tottenham game a few years ago. And I remember going into the Tottenham and it wasn't, there was like a handful of people there. It wasn't nowhere near what it is now. So, like what Tim said, definitely grown massively in the last 18 months. And, will continue to grow um we've got some related questions george yeah. if you want them yeah that's it uh, so well but there's a statement via tom thomas fellow says we have to play at the emirates to build the atmosphere that will the that will only get better the more we play there um daisy was a makes a great days uh, daisy fenson makes a great point she's never been able to get tickets to meadow park uh always in a queue for ages and by, by the time it's her turn they're sold out uh daisy a regular viewer um question for tim from michael armand will he ever take a day off and come and join stand in the north bank <laughs> i i think my north bank days are probably over like <laughs> i saw um it came up on my facebook memories the other day there's a game we played against an italian team called torres in the champions league who i don't think exist anymore and like this was in the days when the champions league games had to be played on a weekday afternoon because the Meadow oh, Park yeah. floodlights weren't good enough for UEFA <laughs> standards. So, like, there's a picture from behind the goal. I think Ellen White's having a shot at goal, and it's literally just me and my mate Ryan in the North Bank and a photographer, and that's it. And the game's, like, in the middle of a, a Wednesday afternoon. So, like, the, the thought that it would look like it does now yeah. literally never crossed my mind at any point point in my life that it would be like that so even if i was inclined to take the day off and go in the north bank i'm not sure i could fit in uh, anymore quite frankly due to the demand but um more seriously no i haven't been in general admission for about six and a bit years before that i pretty much always was but now this is like you know 
we, we cover every game and yeah. and i love and adore that and incredibly privileged to be able to do it it's like my dream so um no i'm i'm happy watching you guys from the side thanks very much yeah well if you wanted to, i'm sure we can sneak you into this but <laughs> we'll just move about 40 people or so um, but yeah um i do what i really like is a lot of the coverage what the women's game is getting and especially from arsenal and then something that daisy's going to talk about in a little while with the guna um fanzine and what they so we'll talk about that in a little while um i'm going to move on to the leicester game um i'll start with you chantel because um i hear it's a special weekend anyway uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so um on your birthday weekend what what's your um what's your thoughts about the leicester game um, well, hopefully a nice present would be a good win and a good game. Um, but no, I think seeing how Leicester played against Spurs in the FA Cup, they did put up a good game. So I think um, we go out guns blazing, do kind of similar what we did with Bristol, just doing them link-ups that we've been seeing. It was nice to see the Dina and Russo link-up um, with Russo taking more a deeper behind and then Stina being up front, which really caused problems. So I think doing that will cause Leicester a few problems. Yeah. Um, what about you, Naomi? What's your thoughts about the Leicester game? Do you think it'll be the same? Um, yeah, I agree that lately Leicester have been, they've definitely approved over the season. Um, but I do think that we... We should, I think I'd like to see Stina as well and um, Alessia in the same formation. Um, and yeah, pretty much agree that if we put up the same performance, we should get a win quite nicely. Um, and yeah, I think that the team should focus on scoring as many goals as possible just to up that goal difference. Yeah, um, I'll come to you, Mel. I don't know if you saw Jonas's interview about like being like prepared, like just waiting to see if... I. Before anyone says, I'm not saying we're in the title race. <laughs> I've made that mistake with the men. But <laughs> but he was saying, like, you've just got to put them professional performances in. Do you agree with that? Like, just wait and see if any of them slip up? Yeah, I feel like at this point, it's out of our hands. But you just have to go out and take every game as it comes and put in a big performance and look to take as many points away as possible from games. I don't think just because realistically we're not in the title race anymore that we should take the foot off the gas by any by any means and coast to the end of the season. I think that's not a professional outlook to have on it. Um, even at the level I play at, it's very much you could be bottom of the league and looking to get relegated and you go out and you look to win. And but yeah, I think it would be almost disrespectful to the teams that we're to come up against if we were to take the foot off the gas. I know that if I played for Leicester and I was going to the Emirates to play Arsenal and I saw they put out a very youthful team and like they're almost like the B team and the bench players and you'd almost be you'd almost be offended thinking that they don't think enough of you to to put the big name players on. So yeah, I think I think he's right. It's professional performances until the end and like I said, as many points as possible and as many goals as possible so if it comes into goal difference and we do have even a sniff at getting anywhere near the top again that if it comes down to goal difference we need to we need to have that in our back pocket yeah i agree um it's it's kind of relevant but Tim, i'll ask you what um we have seen recently katie reed and vivian leah kind of getting minutes do you think um do you think they could break through to like the first team squad and play a bit more like from next season or do you think it's still a bit early I think it's probably still a bit early. What's kind of crucial for them is I think they're actually this might not be the case for Katie Reid, but it's kind of linked to school years um, essentially. So, like Michelle Ajiman going on loan to Watford, for example, she's well above that level. Like I think that's really obvious already that she's ordinarily she wouldn't go to a club like Watford, but it's geographically convenient. She's still at school. So, and, and I think that's kind of a convenient relationship with Watford for that reason. I think 
Katie and probably Michelle, who we sent on loan there, probably in reality, if that wasn't a factor, would have gone still in the championship, but maybe a bit higher up. I, I think the reality is those players will probably go on loan um, next season. And obviously, Katie's really only come back because of Amanda Illichter, um being pregnant. So, But uh, at the same time, Arsenal thought enough of her to bring her back as well, because like they can play Steph Catley at centre-back. So they still essentially have four centre-backs, but they still wanted to bring her back. They still gave her the last few minutes of that Bristol City game. And actually, I shouldn't use the word gave her. Like, <laughs> I think they... they re and, and I think you could see in that game, all right, I know the context is Arsenal are 5-0 up and it's the team at the bottom of the league, but you can see she's kind of got something. Mm. Um, you can see she's grown a lot. I don't know what the hell she's been eating in the last year or so, <laughs> but she seems to have gained about eight or nine inches uh, in a year, But which which is hugely advantageous as well if you want to be a centre-half. So, yeah, I, I think the reality for those players is that they'll go on loan. I, I'm more... I, like, I think Michelle Ajumang is probably closer and she plays in like a position where I think Arsenal have a bit of need. And I think the thing to keep an eye out on is I think the championship ends maybe next weekend. And so Arsenal are going to have two games where they can actually play if they want Michel Ajemang, Freya, Gregory, because their seasons have ended. So we saw this last season. You might remember Freya Gregory came on in a couple of games. So... It, I think it would be really interesting to see if someone like Michelle Ajumang gets any minutes, particularly on the last game of the season. Um, and also they've got that trip to Melbourne as well. And I think that's going to that's gonna be used to assess some of these younger players as well, just to see what their level is and maybe throw them into that game, which is going to be a massive crowd as well, um, and kind of just see how they fit in the group. But in, in reality... I think all of those players are going to be a bit young at the moment to really make an impact next season. I think Ajimang's the closest of our young players. Plus, we've got uh, plus Goldies on her way back, isn't she, from uh, ACL? I think. So that could be some. Um, I think they'll try and bring her back a bit slower, won't? So I don't know if she'll. Um, she, can, she only plays at centre half, doesn't she? She can play in defensive midfield as well, but she's she's not played pretty much any football for the last two years, so who knows now. Um, I'll come to you, Daisy. Obviously, we're talking about the Arsenal-Leicester game. We saw Beth Mead a couple of goals last week. I think last week, yeah. <laughs> last week, a lot's happened in Arsenal. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, do you think Beth is starting to find the end? Would you play her where she is? Or I know we spoke on a previous show about is she playing in the right position? Um, are we talking about Beth Me? Sorry, it cut off a little bit. Um, yeah, Beth Me. Yeah, I think Beth Mead's playing in the perfect position. I think uh, it's a difficult one because obviously she has gone. I think they say eleven games without scoring. I didn't. I hadn't even clocked that she had gone that many games without scoring. I don't, I think she's playing exactly um, where she needs to be and I can't see really who would come in for her if we were to swap that around. Um, I know Lacasse has played on both wings and I think we keep Ford in the team for now while she's in good form. I know also McCabe played on the wing, but for me, I prefer McCabe not on the wing. I know some people prefer her in that position, but... For me, definitely going into the Leicester game, I would start Beth Mead while she's scoring the goals. Like you know, like Mel said, we need to get that goal difference off, and it makes no sense to take her out now. Um, especially, I think she, she, we needed to give all of the uh, the ACL girls a chance to get back in um, to form. For people expecting them to just bounce back um, is a bit unfair. The same with Viv as well. Obviously, she scored the goal against Liverpool, but you've got to give them time. Um, play as many minutes. I know that they've started to play 90 minutes now or majority of the game more than they did. Um, but it's just about managing that. Um, and I'm happy for McCabe to come on and play those minutes as well because obviously she can score goals and get assists. We saw that for Lessie's goal when she, she, you know, she still creates chances. So it's nice that we have those options um, as well. But I definitely think 
for me, Beth Mead stays in that team. Yeah, um, also, Andrew, I'll come to you because I ain't leaving you. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, I've had this conversation before, like, about Steph Catley. Do you, I thought, um, I've not been, I, I think she's been a decent this season, but not to the levels that we've seen before. Would you agree with that or disagree? I think I think I suppose I think she's had a lot of work to do. You know, I think I think so. Uh, you know, when we've been we've been down a uh, we've been down a wing and we've been down a, a, full, a right fullback, and so she's had a lot of work to do. Um, and I think you know some of her kind of uh, she's you know I guess it, it shows that when the, the whole team isn't functioning as as well as it could, um, it's going to affect her. But. Um, I thought, you know, when she, I think, you know, the, you know, the catalyst paint maybe is when she came on, uh, obviously with, um, uh, with Caitlin. And again, that's about the relationships there. I think between those two players, it's really interesting that they, you know, she came on the, on the Conti Cup and, you know, she was part of that move that obviously wound up with uh, Stina's goal. Um, I think, you know, I think she's, uh, I think she, she's a decent player. I think she just got a little bit tired, was affected by, but as with the rest of the team, where we kind of got into a little bit of a funk. Um, but you know, I think I think she's a, a, a great player and um, and 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 is going to be part of a championship winning. Still got, it still could be part of a championship winning team, whether that's the Champions League or a. Um, or, or the or the or the, the WSL, she's going to be and an, an, an important part, not just a, a bit part. Um, so, um, and, and I know you know to, to mention this, yeah, she's 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 she could play center center back as well as uh, as as well as a, a left back. So uh, yeah, plenty plenty of time left for her. Uh, just to mention, um, there's a question popped up, um, and. It, I think I think I think Tim's already answered it. And away from Gaz one two four eight, uh, would we be able to register one of Aggie Mang or, or Godfrey uh, once the championship season ends? Do they automatically become? Are they just as anyway? Yeah. So first of all, I said I said Freya Gregory instead of Freya Godfrey. <laughs> um, so to, to correct the record for for that, um, I, I th so they're on dual registration. Um, so it's not like a straight loan deal. So they're, they're already already registered ah. with Arsenal, but they're academy players anyway. So they don't really count towards gotcha. the same, um, the, like the the limited number that you're allowed, basically. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Um, so we'll go around and do predictions because that would be Andrew. Good. Um, so um, I'm going to get your predictions and who you think like your first goal scorer so i'll start with you mel i mean i wasn't far off last weekend i said four nil i ended up being five i also can't remember who i said was going to score first i want to say it was russo and um, she didn't score first but she scored two so i'll take it um <laughs> i don't know going off that that lesser performance i can't see it being an overly high scoring game um I don't think we've got another 5 0 in us for this weekend. I can't just pull that out two weeks on the bounce. Um, play it safe. I'm going to go 3 0. And first goal scorer, since I've got my flag printed, we've got a song ready to go. I'm going to have to go Kim Little. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like to hear. Um, Naomi, predictions? Naomi's dropped out i believe and we've also lost daisy yeah uh, so uh we're not getting naomi's prediction that is the beauty of a blind person hosting a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, daisy has asked can anyone add her back into it from the whatsapp group chat um uh we'll, we'll try with that um just give us a minute uh Chantel, what's your prediction um, well, Mel stole my prediction of the three nil, so <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> but I won't copy you, with Little. I think, looking from how Leicester played and the goals they conceded, I think I might go for Russo for first goal scorer. Yeah. Well, um, Tim, what would what are you going for, mate? Four nil. Um... Arsenal, obviously, and uh, I'll, I'll have Steena to score first. I, 
I think Arsenal are gonna I think Arsenal have to end this season strongly, given how inconsistent they've been. And uh, Jonas spoke today about not just a, like Chelsea and Man City are not both going to slip. That's not going to happen. But he, he also spoke, and I think this is probably more what he thinks about this almost being the start of next season. So I think Arsenal have to finish this season strongly and they've got a real chance to build a bit of momentum here. And I think they will. Uh, and I think we're going to smash Leicester. Sorry, Leicester. Yeah, I don't think that would have gone damn well for your job if you said 4-0 Leicester, would it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, to be honest, I'm quite confident. I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go three-one. Uh, I, it's, it's, I have to try and be as positive as I can as an Arsenal fan at the minute. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Russo will score first. Um, we will try and get the others back, but um, I don't have that capability to do that at the moment. <laughs> um, so, um, is there any comments, Andrew? Uh, no, not since uh, uh, not since the Agumang and Godfrey uh, okay. one. Um, I'm going to ask you guys a question what I asked on Twitter and Facebook the other day quickly. Uh, quick win. But uh, Mel, uh, who's your player of the season so far? I think going off of where they were performance-wise last year, I think hands down, without even having to think about it for a second, it's Lotta. I think she's been unbelievable this season. Um, she's had a big job to step up and do, obviously, with Leah going out injured and we then we lost we lost Rafa, we took in Kadina, there's we've lost Jen. There's been a lot of sort of chopping and changing at, at centre back in the last sort of twelve months. So for a lot of to be her only real consistent, I think she's every game, obviously every game she's gonna have a slip up or two. But she she goes out, she gives hundred and ten percent and just even just the passion that she's got. She she loves wearing that shirt. She loves the club. She loves the fans. So I can't see anybody taking that spot off of her from me for the rest of the season. Yeah. Uh, what, about, what about you, Chantel? Um, yeah, I've got to agree. Um, with the defence issues of Leah being out, losing Rafa again, she stepped up. She's kind of taken charge of... Um, directing the newer players coming in and setting up that back line and making sure they've kept a tight line when it's needed and she's committed herself to each um tackle and that lot and the past she's been doing i think like this season she's taken it for most of us yeah um would would you agree with that or do you think someone i if if Lotta doesn't get a hundred percent of the votes, I think that's more the question is like how big is the landslide in that? I'm not gonna repeat what other people have said about Lotta. We can all we we can all see it, we can all feel it, the numbers tell you, everything tells you that that she's been great. And I think she's been probably it's a bit like Frieda last season, isn't it? You just knew that Frieda was gonna win player of the season. Same with Lotta, the quality of striker that she she shut out. I think it's almost a more interesting question about who finishes second. Um so rather than just repeating everything about Lotta, I think after that, probably looking at Victoria Pullover, who um, you know, I, I think has been sensational as well. And she really, really wants to play in central midfield. And that was not a guarantee for her coming into this team that because there's other positions that she can play she doesn't play there for her country and you're walking into an Arsenal squad that already has Leah Volti, Kim Little, Kyra Cooney Cross and you still pin down a central midfield spot and there were points this season where Kim Little was on the bench and that was because Victoria Pullover was playing really really well and I think she's a bit of a natural heir to Kim because she has a lot of the same qualities so it's Lotta by a mile um, but but I think Victoria Pullover deserves a shout. I'm going to upset everyone and say Manu Zinsberger deserves a shout as well. I think this is a player who has developed and improved massively. And honestly, I think people have been so slow to see it. But I'm really glad she had a big Conti Cup final because I think the pen is dropping for people now that this is a goalkeeper that I wasn't always sure about. But I've, I've seen a lot of progress in her in the last year. I think she's been really strong this season as well. 
Yeah, um, I'll hold my hands up. I was probably one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but, which, which perfectly reasonable. I think everyone had their doubts, and and you know, rightly so at times. But I think she's really, really stepped up in the last year. I really do. People hate it when I say that, but all good with me. I'll be honest. Like what? Like um, I don't like comparing it, but what the sort of goalkeeper she reminded me of was Aaron Ramsdale. Like she an amazing game. Which we've seen Ramsdale to, then it's just that like lack of, on, uh, lack of concentration or mistake. And then everyone got on that one mistake, and that was. But I think that like, from the manager's interview I've seen this season and even last year, like from when she first came, it's completely different for me. Like, um, Andrew, who would you go for? Player of the season, apart from like, I don't know. Um, well, you're all talking a great deal of sense, but I just want to focus on my Stina contract based uh, anxiety. <laughs> and so I'm going to insist we all vote for Stina. It's going to be 3 0, by the way, on Sunday, and Stina's going to get a hat trick in the first three minutes, okay. summed off. Um, um, then, um, so yeah. Um, yeah, I can't really talk any sense about it, really. So um, uh, we do have some questions, though. Uh, if you want those now, um, um, I'm just yeah, I'm just gonna briefly because I know Daisy and um, Naomi are not here unless they're back. Um, no, no, they're still in the uh, in the uh, land of Twitter, yeah. So, obviously, I know some of you might have seen what the Guna have what the Guna have done. Have you seen that, Tim? Yeah, I have, and and I think it's great. Um, that's that's where I started a um, long time ago um, at the Guna, but obviously they've been really upping uh, the women's coverage uh, through Freddie Cardi. And I, I think it's absolutely fantastic what they're doing to have like a publication um, like that, like a, like a proper kind of fanzine as well. And doing what I think the Guna on the men's side as well has always done really, really well and investing in kind of, you know, up and coming writing talent as well. Um, so, like, I don't know if people know Amy Lawrence as well. She started at the Guna oh, wow. um, some years ago. So, yeah. And Laith, the current editor, like, he's, you know, he's always uh, covering games and things like that. So, really, really, really good, really, really positive. Um, yeah. And I think it's fantastic. And uh, I haven't got round to reading the first one yet, um, but I will do soon enough. Yeah, um, what we'll do is we'll drop the link in the comment um, so people are able to access it because Daisy, unfortunately, she's not here now, but Daisy, in, she's been involved with that. So, obviously, if we can get her back on to talk about it, we can. If we're not, we'll get on the next show to talk about it. But, um, yeah, I, um, I do agree with what they're doing with that. I didn't know Amy had started there because I've met her. Mm. And she's really really nice but um yeah um, i i do think though like, the person who sells the guna has been he's he's like a uh, timeless because he seems to he was there when i was a child and my dad said he was there when he was a child so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's like he's like he's at like arsenal's own tardis <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah he's a really nice person um yeah we'll Go on to the questions, unless anyone like Chantel or Mel or Andrew have got a question for Tim. Um, I do actually, but I'll go. I'll go with the Emerson's question. Sorry, Emerson, I missed your question. You know, I found the scroll button, and Emerson's question was about whether they think the prices are going to go up much um, next year, uh, particularly at the Emirates for the women's games. Obviously, is that one for me? Yeah, go on. May as well. Yeah, um, I I think they could do so. As far as I know, they haven't fully decided about things like how many games are going to be there next year, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like I said, I don't think it's going to go down. I think the Leicester one was a bit of an opportunity because obviously it's Champions League semi final weekend, so they couldn't commit to it at the beginning of the season. But sadly, it came to a stage where they knew they could. Um, but I I th I think they probably will. Yeah, and. Again, I'm saying this as a guy who doesn't pay, but I, I kind of think that is the next step. Um, is not not massively, but perhaps perhaps for some of those Emirates games to just start bringing it up a little bit, 
get more of that revenue because at the moment they do sell very very cheap um but at the same time they do so for example the the club takes more money in the armory uh for for women's games than they do men's games so they do make it up in other ways uh and obviously like you get more people buy stuff in the stadium and take advantage of the catering because of the type type of audience and all of that. But yeah, not not enormous, not enormous price rises. But I think they might stress test it now and say, okay, we've done the big sellouts, we've done the not marketing games at all, and still getting all these people. Like the next natural step is to perhaps just bring some of those prices up a little bit, and that has happened quite a lot actually already. Like my season ticket five or six years ago was probably about 30 quid <laughs> and you know that jumped pretty quickly um up to 80 or so and and personally i think that's right and get trying to keep that balance between being affordable which is obviously as well where they get a lot of the audience from because people have been priced out of the men's game but at the same time making it profitable i you know i think there's a little bit of give in that band yeah and i do think you'll you'll probably see those prices come up just a little bit next year just to just to see what happens um i have got i've got a question it might sound like a really silly question but i'm going to ask it why not uh, <laughs> talking about um the like other teams with the atmosphere and stuff is it just is it just down to what the supporters club and like atmosphere group do or because what I mean with that, surely teams like Chelsea, uh, I'm going to call Chelsea out on it, why not? Uh, teams like Chelsea have got groups like that to help with the atmosphere, or do you think there's something else that Arsenal will do better than the other team? I think in situations like this, the club can help and assist. So, you know, they've done, I think they've done a lot of that very well in terms of like, marketing the games on the strengths of the women's players so you don't ever see any men's players or Mikel Arteta or anything like that involved in any of the marketing like the Arsenal have been very brave and kind of said nope Russo, Leah Williamson, Beth Mitt like we can sell tickets on the backs of those players and really created a culture around that I think having the women's team having their own kit such a strong statement and the way that's sold um as well tells them as much and that's another little revenue stream for the women's team as well so creating that kind of identity but ultimately this stuff only ever comes from fans it's only ever organic a hundred percent of the time a football club cannot make people do that they can help you to do that and they can help you to create the conditions but they cannot make people do that and that's that's come from you guys that's come from supporters clubs that's come from just the littlest things like georgie referenced the meetups in pubs and things like that and just saying stuff like because one of the biggest barriers to creating atmospheres at women's games has been you know people are like i like this but it's very digital and maybe i've got friends all over the country and all over the world i talk to about it but when it comes to rolling up at a game I don't really know anyone to go with. I don't work with someone or or have an immediate family member. So creating that community, little things like that make so much difference. And that's always been my experience at men's games. I've been to people's weddings who I just happened to be sitting next to on a train once. <laughs> and 15 years later, I haven't got rid of them. They haven't got rid of me. <laughs> and, and that's how it all happens, right? And, and that that is the really big thing those little kind of organic steps and i think all of the supporters club the fact that i'm using plural supporters clubs as well i don't think any other team has that but have bit of recognized that have recognized the need for that community so it's not just about here are some chants on a website like that helps but it's like meet up with us in the pub before while we're singing those songs and you want to get involved and then it becomes self-perpetuating for me that always 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 comes from fans and it always will do clubs cannot do that they can't do that they can only help and so like all of all of the glory and credit belongs to the supporters 100 percent. well um state i i do agree with that like as some of you who watch the shows or guys on here 
obviously regist registered blood, so I can't see anything at all. Um, and when I first met Lewis and like Zoe and a couple of the others, like it was quite a big film for me. Like just walking in the pub, I didn't know these people. <laughs> um, but luckily, I took my brother with me. But like they were so welcoming, and then like I honestly have made like friends from it, and like I can go to the games and know. Like with the men's games, I love going to the men's games when I, um, when I can get a ticket. That's another show. <laughs> um, um, like and I have the, I have my group there, but I'm not treated any different with the women's games and that. Like so, I could bump into someone. No one's gonna say, "Oh, what are you going?" or something. So it's they're, they're really, really boost. Everyone just seems so echo kind of what Tim said. Um, Chantel or Mel, do you have any questions? I'll let Mel go first. <laughs> I I actually don't think I've got one for once. I'm I have nothing nothing <laughs> to say, which is a very that really tension for me. That Mark sense. that moment in time. <laughs> um, yeah. So Chantel, uh, I actually don't have a question either. Um, is there any other questions on the chat? Um, yeah, uh, Gaz has come back with one. Uh, Gaz one two four eight. Uh, question for Tim: um, Having been going for a long time, what was the moment you first realised that something big was developing with the fan culture at Arsenal? Yeah, I mean uh, there have been several kind of little landmarks there. I think that first North London derby, um, September twenty twenty two when all of a sudden like there was a North London derby at the Emirates in May 22 and that sold like 9000 which mm. is which was great and then all of a sudden it jumps to 40000 a couple of months later obviously a lot of that on the the back of the kind of the lionesses and, and that was like that was like a ticket selling moment i think but i think um and, and obviously the Wolfsburg game selling out the stadium is a massive landmark. But for me as well, it's it's also been about what's happening at Meadow Park. And uh, I think when we played that Conti Cup semi against Man City last season, uh, when Steena scored the winner in extra time, and it's a freezing cold night in February and half an hour before the game, the whole North Bank's full and everyone's singing. And uh, it really made me reflect because we played Man City in a Conti Cup semi just before COVID hit. And there were probably about 400 people there. And like to see that growth for exactly the same fixture, at exactly the same time of year and exactly the same stadium. That made me think, oh, wow, there's there's really something happening here with the fan culture. And so there's two sides to this, I think. And the side that everyone talks about in kind of the more mainstream media about the Emirates, of like, of course, that takes most of the attention. But for me, I think what's happened at Meadow Park has been just as valuable. Mm. Yeah. Um, We've got Daisy back as well. Oh, cool. Brilliant. Uh, right. um, Daisy, I briefly spoke about the Guna, but we're just asking Tim questions. So if you, just, if you want to talk about the Guna thing and then we'll ask another question. Yeah, sure. Um, I, don't, I don't know what was said. I sort of could hear bits and bobs here and there, but the Wi-Fi was just being temperamental and then wouldn't let me back in so uh yeah it's amazing what we're doing but for, for anyone who knows about the guna you know they've put they've put so much effort into the women the women's game long before this has come out and this is just a, a an amazing bonus i've um like tim was saying freddie i have really good friend with good friends with freddie now he's done a lot of the work working with life to get this out um and i've been so lucky to be able to write um, pieces here and there about the women for the Guna, which have always been so, so well received by people. So it's just really great to be to be part of something. And I've already seen the the way it's been received today. It's just amazing to see. And there's so many great writers who are, are able to have this opportunity as well to write, which is also a bonus. Um, but yeah, for me, I just I just think it's only gonna it's only gonna grow from here. And I'd love to see uh, physical copies being sold. I know that's been the number one question today. Everybody's like, where can I buy it? And I'm like, I'm so sorry, but you can't buy it in person right now. But that's where I think I'd love to see it. But it's just props to great work that's been happening behind the scenes for a while. And it's just credit to how much the game has grown and how much this community around the Arsenal women has grown. I think it, it's, I'll just say it's about time, really, because it's what we needed. Yeah. Um, thank you. For, uh, I definitely 
Great. Um, I have got a question for you, Tim. It's a, it was from someone who couldn't watch the show, but he was talking about um, Russo. Um, do you see Russo as a number nine, or do you see him as like a more, like a ten, or like or do you think a positional change? I I think she's still seen as a nine. Um, I really do. Like I said, I think while they're trying to get Steena to sign a new contract. She might, she might play number 10 until the end of the season. But I think what Jonas sees in her is the potential to be that Sam Kerr, Bunny Shaw level goal scorer. And really what they're trying to do is, is teach her to stay in the box more often and perhaps not get attracted to the ball as much. And, and actually he's been surprisingly forth. I, I asked him a lot of questions about that a couple of months ago. He, and Jonas has been very forthright about it and saying, yeah, I, I, I don't want her to do as much outside the box as she does. Like, I want her to stay there. She's so devastating in the box. He's described her as the best finisher he's ever worked with. And I think he really wants to bring that out in her. And I think his kind of more his message to her is we've got all the people outside the box who do all that stuff. We want you to to mainly stay where you are. And that, But they, you know, Jonas... Re- Arsenal wanted to break the world transfer record to sign this player, um, you know, a couple of months before our contract ended. Like the, the the level to which Jonas values her and sees that in her, I think can't be underestimated. So I do think she'll she'll stay as a nine. She might play ten every now and then, um, you know, when when occasion warrants it. Um, but I do think Arsenal see her as that that kind of like gold level number nine yeah um also i know you probably can't answer this fully but just in your opinion do you see players like viv and steena signing a new deal or do you see them so again opinion um i think steena will um but that it, it kind of depends on what kind of offer she gets um, to be honest, because there will be teams who offer her, you can be our first choice number nine, but it's just a question of how far below um, Arsenal those teams are. Um, with Viv, I don't think she will. Well, I don't think it will happen um, personally. That's opinion. Um, I Yeah, I, I feel like maybe that's just come to a natural end um, and actually when she signed the deal two years ago kind of feels to me like things haven't really largely it's because of the injury because she was out for well she's still out really um for over a year but i don't know i i feel it reminds me a bit of thierry henry with the men's team where he stayed an extra year and actually that extra season he stayed it was kind of like mm, maybe he's like i i feel like maybe Arsenal were ready for her to go and then it was kind of ended up being a bit of a surprise that she stayed and they'd already brought Steena in and then there's this kind of obviously she's such a quality player she fits anyone's football but she doesn't entirely fit Jonas's football I don't think like she's such an outrageous talent that that perhaps doesn't matter as much but I've got I've just got a feeling it's not really going to happen I don't have any information at the moment really either way but i haven't heard that it's going to if that makes sense but i also haven't heard it's not going to so i I think it's still very much up in the air and this time two years ago i know arsenal were a bit more concerned about it being up in the air than i think they are now if that makes sense so i don't know i I'm, i'm fascinated to see to be honest but yeah i i i think we'll we'll see on that one um I, I agree. I made that comparison about Thierry Henry to a friend of mine earlier. Um, also, this is the final question for me, then I'll pass back to Andrew. Um, with I, with um, like the men's game, you see when big name players leave, like wages. Well, I know it's not anywhere near what the women's is, but if Viv did leave, do you think that enables go and buy like a big name, or does it not matter really? See, this is the thing, like, if she left as a number 10, 
I don't think she needs replacing because Arsenal have already got, if anything, too many players mm -hmm. that can play there. I mean, it, it would free up some wage, certainly. But I think Arsenal's plans for the summer are pretty set. I, you know, I think there'll be a goalkeeper um, and there'll be a, a left winger. Um, I think, and that's largely as well about players who who go out just to uptick the quality. I, I don't think you're going to see, I don't think you should see either massive turnover because we've had massive turnover for lots of windows. I think the summer will be a bit more like January where it was, everything was done really early. It was just like Noel goes, Emily Fox comes in, done by January the 5th. I think that's probably the position Arsenal see themselves in a bit more um and then on outgoings as well like like one of the central midfielders is going to have to go because there's like if you include Catherine Cool, that's five that's too many and one of them is going to have to go and I, I don't know who that's going to be um but it feels like there might be a departure there but like I don't I don't again that's not a player that needs replacing really because there's already an abundance so I, I think it will be a relatively quiet summer and it'll be more about perhaps replacing players that are going out left winger i think is probably where the majority of the of the money will go yeah um daisy do you have a question before we pass to andrew um i don't think so i think obviously the bomb Matty thing was a bit of an interesting one because i'm pretty sure all she said was that she liked the way that Arsenal play and then everybody interpreted that that she was on her way um <laughs> but do you think I know you can't you can't predict this but do you think in any way that is possible um that she could come to Arsenal or do you think that's just not realistic if we're being honest no no uh, no I don't think that <laughs> one's realistic I, yeah. I I mean I think the thing is what's interesting around Europe is something like because Barcelona certainly on the men's side we can see that the money situation is not great and they've got players who are in you know at the end of contracts they still haven't been able to renew and surely that's not about like the quality of barcelona or that people don't see themselves there it's can they keep paying like the salary um for some of those players but but bon matty i think is just one of those players that just keep keep absolutely no matter what but it'll be interesting to see what happens with barca over the next few years wolfsburg as well wolfsburg seemed to be you know they really seem to like be falling away in terms of the the a lot their players going to go um this summer and they lost a few already as well so it'd be interesting to see where a lot of those players end up and obviously they've already lost Ober, uh, Oberdorf to Bayern Munich so i mean Bon Matty no that's not going to happen but they, there might be some Barca players who who turf up here and there in the next couple of years i think that's one to keep an eye on yeah so when so Listen to that when she signs and Arsenal signed Kylian Mbappe on a free. Nice <laughs> back in one summer, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's going to happen personally. Um, Andrew, I'll move over to you with questions. Cheers. Yeah, we're um, we're at the one one hour ten minute mark. Just to let you know, George. Um, but I have a question for Tim as a journalist and broadcaster. Um, whilst there's some hilarity around it um for, for one of the things that kind of i think is a isn't helping the women's game at the moment from some announcers broadcasters and it feels petty but getting the names horrifically wrong and i thought you know the molyneux one it did make make me smile when they couldn't even get the english names right but you know kind of as a as a journalist broadcaster I, is it that difficult to just find out how to get the pronunciations yeah, I, I think when they're like really bad, like, like you know, pronunciations and stuff like that, I think there's leniency and mm. like, you know, people don't speak um, certain languages and things like that. And there's like acceptable anglicizations yeah. of, of name. Like, I, I think that's all fine. But yeah, like, like particularly as a stadium announcer, like sometimes in the press box, you sometimes sit near the stadium announcer. And I'll shout out the one at Everton, actually, because he always asks me every year. It's like 10 minutes before the, the lineup readout. He's just like, can I can I check on that? You know, because that's your job. Mm. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, yeah. Like 
that and also like the fa produce like videos and stuff where players tell you how to pronounce their names and things like that so oh, really? yeah 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 so yeah i i don't think particularly like if you're commentating or if you're stadium announcing that's literally your job so yeah i i think that's like a, a pretty minimal amount of due diligence that you should do but then again you know i don't think i always get it right but I'm not commentating <laughs> or stadium announcing. No, thank you. I feel less of a pedant now. Um, but yeah, I think I yeah, and I agree. Sort of it, you know. I can get you know if you get uh, up from if you say Marnum rather than Mornum or or Laura instead of Laura, that's one. But you know, some of the uh, I think the Molyneux one was. Uh, all I can say is maybe the guy only had a, was given the job a minute beforehand. That's but you know the way you describe with that Everton guy, that's the way I imagined it. You like just go and ask. And I'd, but you know to say now you've told me that the um, you know that the, the FA actually produced the the the, the pronunciation uh, videos. It I, you know it just feels like there's no excuse and yeah it is your job. Uh, I I don't know if, if what the rest of the group think about it. You know um, I, I thought Molyneux was. I mean I think it was the. What was the classic one who just said, oh, I'm not going to bother to pronounce that? Who was that? That was, um, oh, I've forgotten the name. Uh, um, it was one of the, it was an ex-player, it was an ex-Arsenal player who just said, I wouldn't bother. And it was, uh, uh, it was um, Laura. Oh, uh, Darren Wells' question for the panel. Uh, what transfers do you think might happen? Um, Thomas Fellows also asked, um, I can't quite, is it? Well, I suppose, I suppose the question for is, who do we think is going to be the left-wing target? Uh, I thank you guys it was hope powell who got who, who, who declined to even try to get someone's name but yeah who's who's our left-wing targets um i wouldn't i wouldn't be um it's a hard one because i i've always said to chloe kelly but i don't know i, I don't <laughs> happen but <laughs> that's um, the um, who would you say daisy um, are we saying realistic or in my wildest dreams? Because <laughs> because uh, I would I was always somebody who would have absolutely loved to have Lauren Hemp. Um, I know that contract is up in the summer, but I also know she would never go for well. In my opinion, she would never go from from City to Arsenal. Um, I know she's apparently now close to signing a new contract. So um, I really don't know. There just there just isn't that many people on my mind that stand out to me right now as as a a left wing that we should sign i don't know if anyone else can have anyone come to mind but it is a really difficult subject because i don't really know if there is anybody who's quite up to scratch to be a top top signing yeah. what about um you any names um yeah i kind of like kelly as well and i think with how we are quite aerial at times with our goal scoring and as um, Tim was saying about Jonas putting Russo more as a number nine and staying in the box um, she's really good at scoring headers and aerial balls and she's so well in the air that some of Kelly's crosses I think that would just be a nice little link up Yeah, uh, Mel? I honestly don't know Like I know we're obviously speaking about left wingers and I feel like we don't need any more defenders but if we're talking about dream transfers right now I would take Naomi Gurma in an Arsenal top in an absolute heartbeat um but winger wise I'm honestly not sure um I think it's such a hard position for us to fill as a team with the way that we play that no matter who who Jonas signs I will put my full faith in him until until proven otherwise I remember when we signed Caitlin Ford to start with. I was a bit weighty after seeing how she was playing at the Port of Thorns. I thought it was a bit of a a rogue move for us to take her in at the club, but I've been proved wrong. I've now I've now proud owner of a Caitlin Ford Arsenal top, so um, <laughs> I'll be quite happily proven proven wrong again, depending on who it is that we sign. Yeah, would you um, say the names that have been mentioned, Tim? Uh, would you say there there's a chance of those or? Yeah, I, I, I don't know so much. I, I only know one player that Arsenal are interested in. I, like, I don't think it's going to happen. The, the, the sort of profile I think Arsenal are looking for is like really direct, um, really kind of quick. And when you look at like, because Arsenal have 
weirdly really tried to sign this player quite a lot and it's just so they tried to sign jc um oh, yeah. a, co a couple of summers ago and I, and I think that's the type of player Jonas really wants as like uh another option and uh i mean i i really like and again this is this is not like information this is what i'd like i i really like jon stott here um at wolfsburg and i and i wonder with what's going on at wolfsburg whether that becomes more attainable but i think that's the type of profile um that, that jonas really wants just that really direct kind of quick really go at people um type winger I, I i think that's what you really want someone very very direct so yeah i i, I don't know who that is yet um but i'll try and find out <laughs> yeah. she's one of the can i just put in she isn't she one of the fastest players uh in women's football i don't know if that stat was correct but i think remember uh, probably was it was it the euros i think it was the euros i, I can't remember something like that but she's extremely fast um and she's only 20 is she only 21 22 yeah she's very she's, young isn't she's she young. so she's a prospect as well yeah got a great long throw on her as well which, <laughs> oh. yeah. not bad. quite megan campbell but, <laughs> yeah. uh, cool thank you for that is there any more andrew uh no it's just uh, just a uh, link gaz reminded him it was hope powell who declined to even uh even uh, i can't remember who's it, whose name it was but she just declined to uh, mention any names but um and as as i Am I right in thinking, you know, what talking about signings and, and that, isn't Arsenal's age profile, aren't we one of the older, oldest clubs uh, on average age uh, in the in the WSL? So, you know, you know, maybe it is about, you know, if, if Aguil Mang does get a, a chance, um, you know, to, to, to kind of understudy, um, you know, kind of just getting the, the, um, the the age profile, but is that right that we Tim that we're, we're the youngest, but the oldest, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, uh, collective age? It might well be, but at the same time, I, I don't think we have that many players who mm. are like a long way over thirty. Like Kim's thirty four, and people always talk about her like she's going to retire like very very soon. I, like I really don't think she is. Um, but yeah, a lot in that kind of 28 to 30 age bracket. Personally, in women's football, I think that matters less at the moment mm. just because contracts are shorter um, anyway. And, and I think we probably saw a few years ago under Joe where they tried to sign like lots of young players and uh, there just aren't enough games to go around to get those young players in. You're even mm. seeing it with Cathy Cool and Gio. I, Personally, I still think women's football is, is in a place where you can't really go too young. Yeah. Right. Um, do you think Gio's got a future at the club? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I, I really don't. And, and it's really unfortunate because she's got, she's got a lot of talent. She really has. But um, I, think, I think there's fault on both sides. Um, of this one, I think Arsenal made a bad decision to take her back from loan um, last year, and then I think um, you know the club were very open to her going out on loan from the very beginning of last summer. I don't know exactly what happened, some of those deals that fell through, so I'm not necessarily attaching blame to her. But yeah, it it hasn't worked. I, I just can't see a world where it does. I'd love to be proved wrong because the player is mega talented, but. I think maybe the club and the player have just drifted too far apart now. Yeah, well, I agree. Um, is there any more, Andrew? Or we can... No, no. Uh, just uh, Daisy confirming. And and now I've now I've been uh, criticising the journalist. I didn't say Lara's second name. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you, Daisy and Gaz. Uh, I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> um, so that is the. Show. I just want to say thank you for all coming on. Tim, really, thank you for coming on. It's been amazing having you on. My absolute pleasure. Anytime. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Um, Daisy, great debut. And hopefully have you on again in the future. Yeah, definitely. Really enjoyed it. Uh, Chantel, great as always. Um, look forward to seeing you at the weekend. Always a pleasure. Uh, Mel, get Art and flag, and well done. Today. Yeah, the Kim Little flag will be the first thing in my bag, and you will be seeing me with those five for ten pound Jaeger bombs on Sunday, George. Oh, I'm, I'm already. <laughs> um, 
Andrew, thanks for your help as again as always. It's like, like um Richard Os Osman and Alexander Armstrong, really, aren't we? <laughs> oh, which one am I? Can I be can I be Alexander Armstrong? I don't yeah. know why I've said that, but I just feel you can pick one, yeah. I just changed your name to Alex, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. My pleasure. Enjoy it. Love it. Thank you to everyone that have watched the show, commented. So please continue to like, share, subscribe. It really, really helps the channel. And um, we will be back next week. I think Dan, I think me and Dan might be on a show together for the like, first time since we all started. I think we just keep so, so yeah. Um, all have a good weekend. Keep safe, um, come on you Arsenal and take care. Bye-bye.